Hey, I've recorded this video to help you understand how to navigate this course. When you first log into Canvas, you are taken into the home page for this class. In the home page, you can find all of the information for the course broken down into modules. The word module refers to these little blocks of information. You'll see as you scroll down that the first two modules are informational. Uh, so you started with a video and you understand that all of the due dates, the study guide, and some um, common question answer stuff is contained in this second module here. As you scroll further down, you'll see that the actual class begins with the module labeled Start Classwork Here. In the title of each module box, you'll also find the due date. I am going to guide you through this second module. I'm not starting with the first one because the first one is a bit of an outlier since you do not need your textbook to complete the first one. It's more of an introductory module. That being said, you'll see, just at glancing, that all of the modules have more or less the same format. Each module contains a video lecture of some kind, an article about the topic, whatever the topic of the module is, and this article is unrelated to your textbook. Uh, each of these modules for the rest of the course also contains a page called Assigned Reading and What Will Be on the Test. This page comes directly from your study guide and corresponds to the information in the textbook that is covered by the module. There's also an additional web resources link that has videos and articles that will be helpful when you are completing your quiz and your blog. And almost every module has both a quiz and a blog. So let's click through and see what this looks like. Here we're in module two which covers late medieval and early renaissance northern Europe. This is the information that I will be testing you on. The tests come directly out of this stuff, so what I recommend is that you use this info to guide you as you make your way through this chapter. These are the page numbers for the chapter from the 16th edition of the textbook. If you have the 14th or 15th edition, the page numbers will be different, so ignore them, just go to the chapter that uh, has this as its name. The short essay question you need to prepare with at least four full sentences. Then you'll see that I've pulled for each chapter two or three images that I think are really good guiding images in understanding what the time period is all about. On the tests, I'll ask you the title, the artist, and the date. I will also ask you to explain why this artwork is important. Use vocab and terms you'll need to know well enough to use in a sentence if asked. So what I recommend is you, you breeze through your textbook, you fill in, either type in or, or write in if you've printed this out, answers to all of this stuff, uh, and then You'll see that I also have in each chapter a video lecture that I've recorded. This video lecture is essentially me summarizing the information from your textbook. I have put stars next to the important terms and artworks to help you as you work through the study guide. I, um, over the years of teaching this class, uh, I've kind of decided to make the study guide a little slimmer. So you'll notice that in some cases there are stars next to artworks that are no longer on the study guide. Uh, that's just benefits you. You know, you, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it if it's not on the study guide. Next you'll see that I have an article from an outside source that's not the textbook that tells you a little bit more about the time period or place or whatever it is I think that they didn't do a very good job of explaining in the textbook. I've included this just so that you have a, a broader understanding of the time period because do keep in mind that this course is designed to get you thinking about art history. I want you to learn about art. I don't want you to just memorize a book. That's really boring. So 
whatever the time period is, you can find other resources to help you understand it. You don't need to be um, married to the books. Next, we have additional web resources. These web resources are reliable academic resources that you can use to help do your research for both the quiz and for your blog assignment. They typically have included um, some articles, oftentimes from museums or from Khan Academy, which is a great resource, and then some, um, some videos. In this case, these are just short videos about specific artworks, but sometimes I include links to kind of like fun, full-length, you know, fun, I think it's fun, fun videos about the Renaissance or specific artists or whatever the thing is. Moving forward, you'll see that you have now arrived at your quiz. The quiz for each module corresponds to the artwork and time period that we're learning about. It's open note, open book, um, there is no time limit. These quizzes will show up again later because I will choose at random 10 questions from the quizzes and I will put them on your midterm and on your final. So you can use your quizzes also as a way to study for those tests. Finally, we have the blog assignment. For each module, the blog corresponds to the time period that we are covering for that module. So for example, in this module, module two, we're covering late medieval and early Renaissance Northern Europe. So what I want you to do, it's your job to write essentially a, a short article about an artwork, one specific artwork from that time period and place. In other words, um, for this module, module two, anything from Northern Europe, which, which means France and upwards, between the years of 1400 and 1500 would work. It uh, can be an artwork that is from the study guide, from the textbook, or it can be something outside of the textbook, as long as you have good resources to research it with, and it fits within the place and time period. What's a reliable resource? Uh, well, one hint is Wikipedia is not a reliable resource, and web pages that do not absolutely guarantee accuracy are not going to work. So if it's something like a travel website, their, their priority is not giving you accurate information. Their priority is probably trying to get you to go on tour with their company. So you can't trust them. Use only resources that you can trust. This means that if you're interested in researching something that is perhaps a little bit obscure, you might struggle. If you are not committed to finding an academic reliable resource, just choose another artwork that's easier to research. For most artworks, you'll be able to go to the museum that holds the art piece, and they often, especially if it's a relatively famous artwork, will have good articles that will help guide your research. You can use the textbook for research. You can also um, search the library catalog potentially for articles. And Khan Academy is great. You can use the links that I've linked in the additional web resources to help you do research for your blog. These are the things that I'm grading for. Instead of reading through them, because you're going to read them, right? Um, you can also uh, go navigate to these little dots up here, click show rubric. The rubric is exactly what I'm going to be grading for and a breakdown of how much things are worth. So some basic criteria, your blog's got to be at least four sentences, um, not too many writing errors, factual information about the artwork, so you've got to include the date, location, name of the artist. Resources, academic resources, you also will need to write a comment on somebody else's blog because these blogs are a discussion assignment. So you'll be able to see everybody else's work and then you'll be able to, at the bottom of uh, another person's blog, you'll be able to click respond and you have to respond using at least one insightful full sentence. 
So here's a total of 20 points for this assignment, and I'm going to be literally reading each of your stuff and clicking through this to grade it. Um, I have written an example blog. It's a little bit longer than what you guys will probably feel inspired to write, but again, if you're feeling like just super inspired, go, go on as long as you'd like. Um, now, let's go back to homepage. Let's just look at some other things. You'll notice when you're on the homepage that on the right hand side here you've got your to-do list that breaks down all of your upcoming assignments with due dates. You can also access all that information under the assignments tab which is on the left hand here. If we click into it you'll see not only all of the assignments when they're due you'll also see how much of your final grade that stuff is worth. So here, your um, practice and midterm uh, reviews are worth nothing. So you can take them over and over, they're just for practice. On the other hand, you'll see that your midterm and final tests are worth 20% of your final grade, meaning each one of them is worth 10%. And here, your quizzes are worth 20% of your final grade, um, so on and so forth. You'll be able to track your grade in real time under the Grades tab. So immediately whenever I grade something, the score will go into here and it'll um, essentially calculate where you're at for the entire course with this total down here. If I um, send you guys announcements, you'll receive the announcements through your email, but they will also be posted here. And again, a reminder that if you have any questions at any point, I encourage you to email me ASAP. Here's my contact information. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much.